Hello, Brent Porcio, topvelocity.net. I wanted to put together a video for you to help cut through this really thick conventional wisdom when it comes to specifically uh, weight training, or let's, let's say um, weight training, but more specifically Olympic style weight training um, in the baseball player, or even more specifically the pitcher. So, you know, the conventional wisdom, you know, the, it's the belief that Olympic training is probably the worst thing that a baseball player could do, right? This is what we hear from kind of the old school coaches that it, it doesn't correlate to ball speed. Um, it doesn't help you more, you know, uh, more anxiety when it comes to injury. That, and that's what I'm going to cover here. It's, uh, we hear the anxiety of, oh my God, we're going to blow out our arms, Olympic lifting. Um, it's, it's just completely unsafe for the pitcher. So I'm sure you've heard this before. I'm sure you could post in the comments here on this video what your coaches have said about the dangers of Olympic lifting for pitchers. And I would actually love to hear these comments. And I think it would be great for others to see how thick the conventional wisdom is. So if you're watching this video and you would like to share um, the conventional wisdom that you've heard about Olympic style weight training for the pitcher, and you would like to post it here for others to read how um, you know crazy it is, or what your what your experience has been. Please post that here. I would love to read and learn um, what even today guys are going through. So in this video, I'm going to go right at that anxiety. We have this really high anxiety in this culture in this country about Olympic style weight training. Um, and when you look at the science, it is completely just ridiculous. It is absurd that we have anxiety about a sport, Olympic style weightlifting as a sport, that has been around for hundreds of years and have been completely proven safe because if it wasn't, you would have all these reports in the news of these patterns of injury, kind of like what football has now with concussions, but we have none of that. It's nowhere outside of this country is it considered dangerous or unsafe for the athlete. We're the ones in this country who has these anxieties, mainly because it's really not a part of our culture. It's, it's more part of the European cultures um, when it comes to physical fitness than it is here. It's growing now because CrossFit is making it more popular, which is great for the sport of Olympic lifting, but it's really not a part of the culture. And even more specific, it's not a part of the baseball culture. Things are changing. We have the Orioles embracing this approach by building an Olympic style strength and conditioning facility. Um, but it, it's, if it is turning, which I, I feel like it is, it's going to change the culture. But currently, we do we do not have the culture of baseball open um, to Olympic style weight training. So this one webinar is for those out there who think and have heard and believe this conventional wisdom that Olympic style weight training is dangerous, and you're going to learn here that it is so far from the truth, um, it's going to make you really feel naive. So. When I show this in lecture, I get a lot of guys who get really upset and frustrated. So there's a lot of emotions that come out when they learn this information because they realize that they have neglected um, developing themselves um, to an, ex, you know, a, an elite level as an athlete, um, mainly because they believed a bunch of um, you know, lies about this, t this type of performance enhancement for the, for the athlete. And when it comes to performance enhancement, we will not cover this in this video. You cannot find a better style of legal performance enhancement when it comes to um, strength training uh, or developing more power 
than um, in Olympic lifting. It is proven to be the most effective resistance training approach or style to enhancing maximum power output and dynamic athletic performance, which is critical for sports such as running, jumping, and throwing. That's why it is critical for a pitcher who genetically doesn't have the ability to generate elite power for him to develop it. And that's why we use it in the 3X Pitching Velocity Program. But we're not going to cover that here. Like I said, we're going to cover the facts and the science around injury in Olympic style weight training and baseball. I'm gonna compare it to what we know with the facts, the science about the injuries that we find in baseball today. And you're gonna be shocked what you're about to learn. All right, so the first study we're gonna dive into here is a injury report by ASMI on Major League Baseball. So we can see, if we look up here, comes from the American Journal of Sports Medicine. Actually, I was wrong. This is not ASMI. This is from the Kelly Army Hospital in West Point. All right, so we're going to look down here, the results of this study on injury. The, it's a six-year study on the injury rates in Major League Baseball. So these are elite Baseball players, right? Major League Baseball players. And this study is from 2002 to 2008. That's a six-year uh, study. And in this study, it said the average number of players placed on the disabled list were per year was 438 players with a high of 516 in 2008 and a low of 388 in 2005. The overall incident rate for injuries that resulted in players being placed on the NBL stable list was 3.6 per thousand hours. So in this six years, we have 3.6 injuries per thousand hours in Major League Baseball. The analysis of, of the, the data set by season showed a small decrease during the first three years of the study, followed by a subsequent increase in the final three years. Um, I think the only thing else that we could learn from this study um, is that pitchers receive most of the injury. Um, so among the players injured, upper extremity injuries accounted for 51.4%. Lower extremity was 30%. Um, that's some more uh, good information from the study. So most of the injuries are coming from the upper extremities. And like I said here, the pitchers experienced significantly higher incident rates for injuries when compared with fielders. So the pitchers were, were getting injured more. Okay, so that, that that's what we're trying to... We, basically, I'm showing you this study because I also have an elite Olympic lifting six-year study on injury rates, and we're going to look and compare it to those. So here we see, let's remember this, we've got 3.6 injuries. I'll highlight this for a thousand hours for Major League Baseball. All right, let's go to Olympic lifting. So we have a study here, injury rates and profiles of elite competitive weightlifters. Okay, so this was performed um, at the University of Memphis. And let's go into the results here. Okay, here are the results. Total of 873 reported incidents occurred during the time period investigated. Let's go to the where was what was the time period investigated. So it's right here in the methods injury report forms over a six year period, 1990 to 1995. So six year period, and this is from the United States Olympic Training Centers in Colorado Springs. Okay, so. Six-year study, just a little bit earlier in time, but shouldn't make a difference. The um, here's the results from us, this six-year study: a total of 873 reported incidents occurred during the time period investigated. Injury classifications included 560 reports classified as training-related and 313 reports classified as non-sports related. Let's go down to where we get the per thousand hours. So here it is down here. Injury rates for the subset of resident athletes at the 
United States Olympic Training Center were 3.3 injuries per 1,000 hours. So we have two studies. Let me highlight it here, 3.3 per 1,000 weight training, weightlifting training hours. Baseball, we have 3.6, or, or Major League Baseball. So this is what we're learning. It is proven right here in these two studies we find that it is more dangerous based on 3.6 per 1,000 hours to 3.3 per 1,000 hours to play Major League Baseball than it is to be an elite Olympic lifter based on these two six-year studies. Really cool to see we have two studies with the same time period, um, but also giving us um, the, the data uh, based on 1,000 hours. And we're learning already that it's safer to be an elite Olympic lifter. Another important thing out of the Olympic lifting study, I think we go up in here where the results are more summarized. It says, it shows some of the common injuries which were mainly in the back, knee and shoulders. That was 64% of the injuries. And they were just mainly the, the, the most prevalent in the study were mainly strains and tendonitis, which we know as overuse injuries. These injuries, the injuries that were more chronic tended to be in the knees, and but we know it wasn't traumatic because the recommended number of training days missed for most injuries was one day. So 90% of the injuries for the elite Olympic lifters um, only took them out of one day on average uh, from their training sessions. So obviously not serious injuries when you are back to normal in one day. If we looked at major league injuries and we looked at the average, the major league ball player um, was removed from the sport, I'm trying to find, there it was, the mean number of days number of days on the disabled list was 56 days so the average injury in major league baseball knocked them out for 56 days the average injury for olympic elite olympic weightlifters um, knocked them out for one day or less on 90 percent of the cases so we're also seeing slightly more traumatic injury in major league baseball with also more injury so right there when we're looking at the elites we can see the conventional wisdom is not um, holding up here. It's obvious within these two studies that elite Olympic lifters or elite Olympic lifting is a safer sport than playing Major League Baseball. Okay, so is that enough? Is it enough to say, you know, to the to the parent with the young athlete? Well, Major League Baseball players are injured more often and more traumatic than elite weightlifters or elite Olympic lifters. When their son or child is, is not an elite, probably not. So what we'll do is we'll help educate that parent on these injury reports on recreational levels. So I have two other studies. This study was performed on a recreational level for weightlifting or weight training. So we have a relative safety of weightlifting or weight training. The, let's see here. We'll see if it shows in the, the age groups. Oh, there it is, 13 to 16 years. The age groups were primarily 13 to 16 year olds. Okay, so now we're in younger, the younger age groups um, on the recreational levels. And now let's look at the injury rates here. So first let's go down and see how we're, where these are classified. So we're gonna see in these charts here that we have all these sports that they um, evaluated to, to look at their injury rates per 100 hours here. So we're just gonna have to do the math and, and uh, change it to a to 1,000. We see that all of the sports here, the last ones are weight training, weight lifting. Just to know the difference between weight training and weight lifting, they put it in their questionnaire. Here it is, weight lifting was the snatch, clean and jerk, and um, that's the Olympic lifts. Weight, so that's weightlifting. Weight training was other free weights. So squats, 
um, deadlifts, those would be classified as weight training. So we can see here in this report, and basically their, their final report, it said weight training, which was your other free weights, had a higher rate of injury than weight lifting, which was classified as Olympic lifting. So it's good to know here it's showing Olympic lifting is even safer than other free weight training. But these were based on a lot more hours than the other ones. So if we do the math, let's just look at the weight lifting. So we have 168,551 hours of weightlifting, Olympic weightlifting, and we had an injury rate of 0 0.00017 per 168,551 hours. So if we just move our decimal point, so if we take our decimal point and we move it one, two, then we'll have 106, no, 1,685 or 86, if we round up, uh, hours, and if we move our decimal points here, one, two, that'd be 0.17 so 0.17 injuries per 1,686 hours, roughly, based on this data here. So if I, um, I did the math too, and if I just move that to 1,000 hours, we have 0.13 injuries per 1,000 hours for the recreational level of 13 to 16 year olds who are weight training. Pretty, pretty low. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's, lower than all the other sports here. Uh, soccer being the most dangerous for a young player or young kid to play. So we're not seeing this anxiety or the anxiety that um, weight lifting, Olympic weight lifting, even weight training, other free weights is really dangerous even at a recreational amateur level. They even posted in this study here in short, in their conclusion, it says, there seems to be no rational case for continued widespread anxiety about weight training or weight lifting in children. So this study set out to, to prove that we should not have these anxieties um, about young kids' weight training because it doesn't exist. Um, mainly because, too, when the young kids are lifting, they're just working with light weight, and they're working it with, um, you know, in a controlled environment to where um, if they're not ready, if their technique's not there, then they won't be performing the lift and or, or that, you know, at, at that level. So they can lower um, the, the intensity. And you really can't do that on a soccer field, you know, or on a baseball field where the you know, the force that can hit your body on a very dynamic, high intensity play could be way farly, you know, you know, exceed the athlete's threshold or ability to withstand that stress. Um, so you, you can't really control the amount of load or stress that you're putting on the body in a, in a game as well as you can control it in a lifting environment. So that's why we see elite Olympic lifters at 3.3 per 1,000 hours on injuries, and we see young Olympic lifters at 0.13, mainly because of the fact that the younger kids aren't doing the heavy lifting or the heavy weight training that the elite Olympic lifters are because um, ultimately they, they can't do it. Technically, they can't even do it. All right, so let's compare this recreational study of Olympic lifting to a more recreational study of baseball. So I found one, incidents of injuries in high school, softball and baseball. So this is going to be, let's try to see the age groups here. So we have a lot of, we had 36,000 or 369,000 girls and 473,000 boys participated in interscholastic softball and baseball during 2008-2009 uh, school year. Let's see if we got the age groups. Well, I mean, we know the age groups being it's high school, so it's probably going to be similar, 13 to 18, even though 13 to 16 was the other one, So, um, but similar on age groups. So let's look at, at the results. What results came out of this study here? Okay, so we're going... Going down to the results, let's see if I can find it. Where does it start? 
I don't think I passed it. Okay, the injury incident rate for the overall cohort was 4.5 injuries per thousand hours. Although softball players had a higher overall injury rate than did baseball players, the difference was not significant. So up here it actually shows that in the summary results. So we say, mm -hmm. so it says 4.5 per thousand hours was the overall for both softball and, and baseball. And then it's separated here. So baseball players was four injuries per thousand hours. So more, you're, you're definitely uh, way more vulnerable to injury um, if you're playing high school baseball than if you're doing high school um, Olympic lifting. Based on these two studies, your chance of injury in baseball at, in high school is a four injuries per thousand hours and point one, I mean point one three per thousand hours in Olympic lifting. So it, it's 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 obvious here that that study is correct. We should not have the anxieties about young athletes participating in Olympic style weightlifting. We should actually have the anxieties in them playing um, um, baseball or, or, or you know, sports. So hopefully, just looking at the research here, and this is why I put the research here, I, I can't just sit here and tell and do a video and tell parents out there that they shouldn't have these anxieties. I've got to show the studies. So they've done the studies. Um, they have uh, a, a lot of information here. They're using big control groups um, to get this information. So um, it, it just isn't the case. So the conventional wisdom is completely wrong. It just isn't the case. We don't have an epidemic of injury in weightlifting. We have an epidemic of injury in baseball. If we look at uh, the Tommy John surgeries from you know 12 year olds to 18 and how they've increased in the past 10 years, it's sickening. Um, I wrote an article about that on the site. You can actually see the data from ASMI, American Sports Medicine Institute, showing uh, the like 700% increase in surgeries being performed on young ball players today. So we're seeing the injury, we're seeing the epidemic in baseball, but not in weightlifting for young kids. Now we don't understand this either, but in European countries, they start lifting weight training young kids at seven or eight years old with no anxiety. We, um, we have anxiety starting a kid at 18 or 16, um, but we don't have the anxieties in this country of putting a 12 year old in 600 innings of travel ball for the year, which is just insane. And that's why we have an epidemic of injury in recreational baseball. So I really hope that this video is educating a parent, a coach, even a player that has been brainwashed by this horrible, horrible, um, basically lack of information around de the development uh, of a base, you know, of, of, of an athlete. Um, and the way I look at it, and I, and I don't have the study here, but there are studies that show that you are actually more vulnerable to traumatic injury when you don't do any type of weight or resistance training. Resistance training strengthens the tendons, the bones, and the muscles, which will be, help you to handle more stress um, in your everyday life and, of course, in athletic performance. So not allowing your son, your ball player, your pitcher to perform some resistance training, preferably Olympic style, being that it is the safer one, then you are setting them up actually for more traumatic injury in their life and in their career because of that lack of development, physical development that you are allowing them to go through at a young age. So to me, this is a really serious case. Um, I know I like to kind of get in the controversy and look at the science and see where we're being misled. And I like to bring that to the public's attention. And, and that's fun, so I enjoy this. But at the same time, I'm actually really upset that we have yet to evolve as a culture and learn this information. I feel like we should be smarter than this, and we're just not showing that. And I really hope that when you're watching this video, and if it did have that impact on you, and you've learned a lot just from this science here, that you'll pass this on, because it needs to be put out there. You need to pass this on to your coach. You need to pass this on to, your, to a parent, to another player, to another coach, 
anyone that you feel needs this information because they're influencing a lot of, of the youth out there today that need to know this information so they'll still they'll stay safer and healthier in this game or in 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 life so I appreciate you uh, watching this video I hope it helps um, there's other great information at topvelocity.net more great uh, videos like this more great information cutting through conventional wisdom uh, and I hope it'll really help you in your career and in your game. You can also sign up for the 30 days to 5 miles per hour if you want to learn more about our mechanical approach to increasing ball speed. Um, but besides that, I'm here to help. Reach out to me. you got my phone number on the site. You can email me. You can contact me. Uh, and I'm here to help. And, uh, and I wish you the best.